Welcome to this video where we want to show you how to install a Soldier Web App on a new cloud server. For example, we will use Jiffy Box, a German company called Domain Factory, which allows us to create cloud servers without using a US provider and get a cloud server here in Europe. So let's name it test. We always start with the smallest version and then we can upgrade later if we need more performance. You can choose your favorite Linux distribution. I just did my tests yesterday with Ubuntu, so I will stick to that. And while SSH public key is a good thing, usually I just don't bother setting up that for this test machine, so I will just use my secret new password. And now I will buy a new server here. So this will take a second to set up the new server. You see it's created, it's launched, it got a swap partition, it got a backup, it got a new Linux, and it's ready to go. So let's start it. And while it's starting, let's go to the website for my domains. And here we have mangipred.de. And I want to create a new entry here. So we add a new entry named, let's say, app. And it's an A entry, so it points to an IP address. And you can just put any IP you like here, but I will just use this setting here to use the Jiffy box. And this is 142, this is, yeah, this is a new one. So save, may take a while, and now we have here app monkeypads.de defined. This is running, so let's close the websites. Yeah, sure. And connect via SSH. SSH root add our new domain. So we connect, uh, it shows us a fingerprint and you should actually usually, well, check it if it's your server and not some man in the middle. For me, it's okay. So, oh, we had a different yes, of course. Uh, I had another machine earlier with the same IP, so we need the password. Copy and paste. Yeah, and we are logged in. So let's start. We install first updates. Depending on how old the distribution is, there may be updates. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Let's see, nothing to do. So let's install Apache. Yes, Apache is installing, may take a while. And on the end, it should be up and running. So let's go to Safari, app.monk. And there it is. This is our new server. Just to prove this, let's go and edit this website. So it's in var www uh, HTML, and there's an index HTML, and we edit it. Just go. Oh, that's the title, title, let's see, some CSS. There is the text, and let me just type Sojo and save. Yes, enter and reload the page, and now you see we have Sojo here. So, next thing to install is a lib unwind. So, there is a upcache. 
search lib unwind. This is a library soldier needs for exception handling. apt cache. Yeah, there it is. So you see there's lib unwind 8 and we need that. So app get install lib unwind 8. So installed. The next thing may be to install something like PHP if you need that. Uh, but we go here with Perl. And I already know that we need Perl 6 because that's oh install. That's the version coming with this distribution. So up get install. We get Perl installed. If you like to use PHP, you may also want to install it. Lib Apache to mod per PHP in this case. And maybe also a PHP curl extension, because if you want to use our example for load balancer, I think it uses curl. So next thing would be we want to have a let's encrypt certificate. Let's encrypt. And I can go here on the get started page and then go to the third bot page. And here I can get instructions. So I pick my software Apache on Ubuntu 18 and it will show me instructions like this one. Let's copy, put it in, and I get this damn error message. The error message is coming because well, the kernel version used by my provider here at GFBox is a bit older, so it doesn't support this new Scratch file system even if I install all the packages or make a distribution upgrade. So I don't want to bother with that. I just install the setbot package. So we get Python installed. Thirdbot is just a script in Python. And when it, once it's installed, we can run it. Thirdbot for Apache. Oh, there's something missing. There's a model missing, and if you Google for it, you will find that you need the Python third bot Apache package. So we install that. Try again. Now we got something. So now I need to get an email address, and let's say this one, and we agree to all the terms and conditions. Oh, I don't like to share. And now I need the domain. This was app.monkeybread.de. We get a new certificate. Let's, so let's encrypt is now trying to contact us on app.monkeybread.de and see if we actually own this domain. Seems to work. So we want a redirect to SSL, yes please. And we are done. And we can go to the browser here. And we can just reload the page. And we are redirected to HTTPS. And we got a certificate. How lovely. You may want to check or uh, make sure you have this uh, schedule for your renewal of the certificate. But I can check here and um, well, there is a third bot timer already running for the third bot service. So I hope this is running well. Otherwise, I will have to manually come back. And when is my date? Let's see, what was it? 
can just look here. So you can look on the on the expiration date and you can say expires 18th of May. So I may come back at uh, maybe 17th and take a look whether this worked. So uh, next is to start Sojo and start our web app. So let's launch Sojo, make a test web app. This is, oh, this is ugly. Let's just make small for pedigree, no groups, uh, small icons and labels. So, okay, we have our list here. Put a label on this page. Let's put something on the open event. Me dot text is Sojo version string. We save on the desktop. Let's just run it. Yeah, no syntax error. Launching and yeah, it shows the version. Okay. Stop. Now we build it. So Linux for 64 bit and click build. We build for Linux and we got those files. Now I have to get those files on the website. So let's see. Here we got the fetch app and this can do SFTP. So let's see monkeypred.de. Username is root. This is SFTP. We need a password. This was okay. Found it. Add to Keyshine. Yeah. Yes. Connect. So we are on the server. I go to wow www, that's the HTML, and I upload my test folder. There it is. Okay, I upload my test folder. So it takes a while. Well, not so fast like yesterday. If you don't change anything like requiring a newer plugin or you change the Sojo version, you don't need to upload the libs folder every time, just the app. So we go here on the get info page and let's see, the folder must be wide able. So look in the folder, so the config file needs to be get info wide able. The app, get info, the app must be executable. And the CGI, get info, must be executable. Okay, we got that. Next step. We can go to the website actually and see what happens. You probably know it already. Something goes wrong. But actually, yeah, we can. We can now see the CGI. But we want it to run. We don't want it to be delivered. So let's try again and go to the configuration. So let's see. We go to etc Apache. Here we have Apache configuration and just let's edit it. Nano is a nice editor here. Apache. 
So a lot of configuration stuff and let's go to the bottom line and we add the handler for CGI. So I just put it in as a global setting, not related to any particular website. So let's exit here and save. Now we may need the service to reload its configuration. Oh, go back to the website. Oh, where is it? There. Oh, still not working. Okay. Next thing, what's in the what's enabled folder? Let's see, we have CGI is uh, missing. So, A to E enable mod with the command line tool to enable something. And we enable CGI. Okay, it tells us we should restart, so let's do that. Let's run it again. Oh, no, we don't have permissions. Hey, this web server tends to be complicated. Okay, we have to go to permissions. What, what permissions? Okay, let's see. We take a look on the error log, which is in var log Apache 2 error log, and tail shows us the last 10 lines, and tells us, oh, we didn't allow the execution of CGIs. So let's go back to the nano line to edit the configuration. Let's see. So the exit CGI is actually there for the HTTP, HTTP access file. Oh, this is, this is here. Here in the file uh, is exit CGI already, but we have to allow the things to override. So. You can put it on various levels. Let me put it here and save, save, yeah, and just restart the whole thing again. Go to the website and restart. And it's loading, yeah, and we get here our 2019 R. 3.2 and it's working with a let's encrypt certificate and we are very happy. Now, Sojo made an update and there's now Sojo 2020, released two currently. And we want to also get a 22 app to run. So let's make one. Test to yes of course so label a new label the label has an opening event and i put in the version string again so to version string and we save it test two on the desktop okay not this one, this one, okay, and build. Oh, we should have checked what ports we are using. So let's see all the settings, there are a lot of settings pages. So we are using, oh, there's no port selected. Let's say we take this 8080 and we take the 9000 for SSL. Okay, save, build again. So we have our, our app built and we have somewhere here, the Apache. So this, this app doesn't need to go in the, in the folder for the website. It can be in any folder. So this new application doesn't need to go into into the web folder, it can go anywhere. Let's say we put it, where could we put it? Let's say we put it in the home folder. No, the root folder. That's the folder we go when we log in. 
So I just, oh, let's put it in the wall folder. Let's put it there. We upload it once again. Um, when you're just changing a few typos on your labels and you rebuild the app, this folder will be the same. Just if you change your plugins or your soldier version, you get new libraries and then you need to upload those because it takes a while to upload 50 megawatts. What's so big here? So let's see. Oh yeah, the console framework, 40 megawatts. Yeah, that includes uh, Unicode libraries, which are probably something like 38 megabytes. What also you see there's SSL, Socket, SQLite is included. Regular expressions are used in the web framework internally, as well as some crypto engines and the SIP compression. Yeah. Oh, it's finished. So let's see, this is a test folder and there's the test app and Let's check. Oh, we make it executable. That's always good. Apply. Anyone can run it. So, back to the website. It's running. No, it's not yet. Let's start it. So, cd to boot test test to ls. Oh, oh. LS L, let's see. Okay, we have the app, it's executable and just let's run it. So this is running the app and um, this is not as a background but as a foreground process so the app uh, blocks my terminal window but I can try and go on this app and say 8080 and let's see what happens? Yes, it's running and it shows me the version. Wonderful. But it's not secure. Well, what can we do about that? We can go to the same page with the other port, of course. Oh, it doesn't work. Okay. So, to have SSL work, I of course have to tell Soldier my key, but why not use the Let's Encrypt certificate with a web browser, a website? So, you may have a website, and let's run our Test 2 app in the background. So, with the hand symbol. Now it's running in the background and we don't uh, we don't block the terminal window and we can continue to do things. And now I want to use the proxy extension for Apache to redirect from our website to the web app. So A2 in mod we have to enable the proxy proxy model. Also the proxy HTTP model. And now we can restart the server once again. And now we have to define our proxy settings. So let's go in the configuration. And you can read a lot of documentation about it. And I will just do it quickly here. CD sites enabled. So let's see, there's a configuration for our SSL page and let's just edit this. And here is the definition for our virtual host and in that virtual host I just go and well, redirect all traffic. So when someone is coming to this website we redirect to localhost 8080. You could make here a folder for each one if you like, but that's a little bit more work. So save. And now we go on the website, but this case app dot, oh, let's just go on the website. We still see our, oh, is my redirect not yet enabled? Oh. 
Oh, we changed the configuration. Okay, let's just restart it again. So, reload. And you see our uh, SSL certificate is there. And we got redirected our traffic to the Soldier app. So this is now running on the subdomain. And there's a little thing I want to change, and that is I don't want to have the web app also run on the... Yeah, it's still running here, unsecure. I don't want to have that, so... We can kill it again, so here it's 22. So I, I just kill it, I have no nothing in my web app to actually quit it correctly. But now I can run it again, and I can tell Sojo to only run it on the local host. I think so. Oh yeah, you see it quit. So we can use the network interface index here with loopback to tell Sojo to only run this app on the on the local host. And now if I try again this, it shouldn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work. But if I go here, unaware, where is? Oh, oh sorry, uh, I'm in the wrong folder here. I didn't notice. So ls cd test 2. So, okay. And now the app is running on on this uh, domain, on the subdomain, and it's only accessible through Apache with the SSL certificate, and then the traffic is forwarded through the loopback interface locally within the machine to our test2 app. So, and that's all I want to show today. The next thing to do would actually to define maybe something like uh, have different subdomains point to the same server and then on the server define a, a virtual host for each of them. Or another way would be to have a folder here like here app1 and have the proxy redirection only go for this folder. So you can have several apps running on the same machine. And another thing to do would be now to create a, maybe a script to run automatically and to launch the app when the server restarts. But well, that's a more advanced topic. So thank you for watching and goodbye for today.